Oh boy, the Crucible Sandbox. There isn't a more controversial topic when it comes to Destiny 2. Looking all the way back to the launch of the original Destiny, it's clear that the community has been at odds with Bungie's weapon and ability balancing from the very beginning. Destiny has always had a holy trinity of sorts when it comes to PvP sandbox balance primary weapons, special weapons, and abilities. When Destiny 1 first shipped, these three pillars of the sandbox were in relative balance to each other, as a matter of fact. If anything, primary weapons were too good. OG Vex Mythoclast was basically a machine gun, then pre-nerf auto rifles like Suros Regime and Shadow Price dominated the game, which then led to the last meta truly ruled by primary weapons. House of Wolves, which saw the dominance of Thorn, The Last Word, Hopscotch Pilgrim, and Red Death. Going into the Taken King, Bungie had a choice to make. Their first option was to do slight nerfs to the strongest primary weapons of the time, as well as bring up the underperforming primary weapon archetypes. The second option that Bungie had, and the one they ultimately went with, was to heavily nerf the strongest primary weapons like Thorn and Last Word, to achieve a relative balance amongst primary weapons. This decision, however, started a nerf spiral that lasted for years, as the sandbox Holy Trinity was now broken, with primary weapons being a tier below special weapons and abilities. When Taken King launched, the new Apex Predator of the Crucible became Sniper Rifles, which reigned supreme until Rise of Iron, where they were given much harsher flinch to tone them down. The crown worn by snipers then passed on to shotguns, which eventually had their in-air accuracy reduced to bring them in line. And when that wasn't enough, Bungie took away special ammo on spawn completely, putting them into the same gutter as primary weapons. You'd think the game would have finally been fixed, yeah? Guess again. One-shot abilities like sticky grenades and shoulder charge took over. This death spiral of nerfs concluded with Destiny 2's launch, where special ammo didn't exist, abilities did piss poor damage, and had painfully long cooldowns, movement options were neutered, and primary weapons across the board had their damage gutted, extending primary weapon TTKs beyond one second. In the years that have followed, Bungie has been slowly reversing this nerf spiral, with the Go Fast update, Forsaken reviving special weapons, and Armor 2.0 bringing ability cooldowns back to Destiny 1 territory. Primary weapons, however, are still in the gutter compared to special weapons and abilities, leaving the sandbox Holy Trinity in a broken state. This video is going to be the first of two parts in which I'm going to explain how I would go about balancing the Crucible Sandbox. In this video, we're going to discuss what must be done to finally bring Stasis in line, as well as touch on other problem light-based abilities. And finally, we'll address the special ammo economy inside the Crucible and how that can be brought under control. Let's jump in. Alright, let's start our Crucible Sandbox discussion with Stasis. Back in January, I made a long video covering every single ability and aspect of Stasis, and how I'd go about balancing this element for PvP. Bungie has partially addressed Stasis, with good nerfs to Duskfield grenades, Glacier grenades, the freeze timers for the Warlock melee, and cold snap grenades, as well as good nerfs to the Titan Super and the Hunter Super. However, all of these changes are band-aids over a bullet hole, and deep foundational changes to Stasis Freeze, Slow, and Whisper of Hedrons are needed, and my thoughts are in alignment with Bungie's Sandbox team, as their leader, Kevin Yanez, spoke in a recent TWAB about Bungie's future plans for Stasis Balancing, in which he singled out Stasis Freeze, Slow, and Hedrons as the primary issues that they will be addressing. With all this in mind, let's discuss what remains to be done about Stasis 
to bring it in line once and for all. For freezing, the absolute maximum freeze duration for players should be one second. This matches the slowest TTK primary weapons in the game, such as 120 RPM hand cannons and 180 RPM scout rifles. Furthermore, players should be able to break out instantly upon hitting the breakout ability button, whether you're on the ground or in the air. Remember, you do take damage if you choose to break out early, so the frozen player would be faced with the decision to either wait out the one second freeze or to instantly break out at the trade-off of health. I would also completely ditch the breakout animation, as there's no need for it to exist, especially considering the animation doesn't even play at the end of short freezes already. As for players in Super, they should be treated like boss-type enemies in PvE, meaning that they freeze in the sense that ice encases their body in a visually obvious way, but the active Super player is still able to roam about like normal. The only difference is that in this state, the player could be shattered to take big damage. This change would also put an end to one-off supers like Thunder Crash being suppressed out of their super by non-void abilities. For slowing, the only thing that should happen to players is the actual slowing of movement speed and the reduction of ability regeneration rates while slowed. No more having your aim go to Timbuk2 because you got hit from a shuriken that bounced off of three walls before finding you. And movement abilities like Jump and Dodge and Icarus Dash should not be suppressed by slow either. We have suppression for that, which is part of Void's identity. Stasis has no business intruding on that. The next major change to Stasis that I would make is for the Fragment Whisper of Hedrons to only grant a 10% damage bonus when freezing players, as opposed to the 25% damage bonus it grants now. I would preserve the 25% damage bonus when freezing PvE combatants, however, in an effort to keep Stasis as a powerhouse on that side of the game. Being able to secure a 10 second damage buff in PvP with auto tracking freezing abilities is really strong, and it's a huge part of why 120 hand cannons and Dead Man's Tail are so dominant in the current sandbox, because Whisper of Hedrons allows high-impact weapons like these to two-tap, which is a blazing fast 0.5 second TTK for 120 hand cannons and 0.4 seconds for Dead Man's Tail. If Hedrons only granted a 10% damage buff, DMT would no longer be able to two-tap. And with the changes that I would make to 120 RPM hand cannons, which I'll be showing you in my second video about the Crucible Sandbox, they also would no longer be able to two-tap with Hedrons active. The last major change to stasis that I would make is that while a player is in an active stasis super, the Fragment Whisper of Rhyme will not grant health or over shields when picking up stasis shards. Right now, behemoth titans in particular can abuse this fragment to generate health and overshields on demand while in super by using their heavy attack and then sliding through the mass of stasis crystals that are generated. Bungie has already specifically nerfed a stasis fragment's interaction with active supers before. Look no further than Whisper of Chains which only gives a 5% damage resistance buff while in super, as opposed to a 25% damage resistance buff when not in super. And frankly, all the other major issues with stasis at this point are derivatives of stasis freeze and slows base effects. And with my proposed changes, I think that stasis would finally be in an acceptable state in PvP. Other than stasis, one of the biggest problems facing the Crucible Sandbox today is the potency of easy, no kills required weapon buffs. We already talked about Whisper of Hedrons, but there are two other damage buffs that need to be reined in to put a stop to Dead Man's Tail and 120 hand cannons murdering people like it's Call of Duty out there. The first of these damage buffs is high energy fire. With mods like Taking Charge, it's easy enough to collect stray orbs from your teammates and then walk around with a 20% damage buff that doesn't go away until you either get a kill or you die. The worst form of high energy fire, however, is when used in conjunction with Radiant Light and Powerful Friends, especially inside of Trials of Osiris. How this mod combination works is that if you activate your super near a teammate 
who also has powerful friends on, your Super Pop will trigger your Radiant Light mod, which will in turn give your teammate a stack of Charged with Light. This then triggers the Powerful Friends mod that your teammate is wearing, which will cause you to acquire a stack of Charged with Light. But it doesn't end there, because you became Charged with Light. This causes your Powerful Friends mod to then grant your teammate a second stack of Charged with Light. Essentially, you popping Super in safety Near a teammate allows him to carry around a 20% damage buff for all weapons until he gets either two weapon kills or he dies. In limited life modes like survival or trials, this basically wins games by itself. Just like with Whisper of Hedrons, I think that high energy fire should only grant a 10% damage buff inside the Crucible. That way, high impact weaponry like Dead Man's Tail and 120 Hand Cannons can't two-tap Helpless Guardians. The final damage buff that needs to be addressed is Empowering Rift. Right now, Empowering Rift also grants a 20% damage boost, which is enough to push many high-impact weapons into Call of Duty territory for simply sitting in a circle. Like before, I think that Empowering Rift should only grant a 10% damage boost inside PvP. If you want to push your weapons into COD territory, you should at least have to get kills or use a support super like Bubble to do so. There has to be some trade-offs involved. With Stasis and Freebie damage buffs addressed, there are a few problem light-based abilities that need to be addressed for the Crucible Sandbox to improve. The biggest offender of them all is the Exotic Boots Geomag Stabilizers. Geomag Stabilizers grant you the final 20% of your super for doing literally nothing. In respawn-enabled modes like Control, this is annoying, but not truly game-breaking. For limited life modes like Survival, and especially in Trials of Osiris, Geomag Stabilizers literally win games by simply having them equipped. There is nothing you can do against a team of three Chaos Reaches with Geomag Stabilizers that will have at least one super per round from round three onwards in elimination matches. I propose that Geomag Stabilizers receive a total rework on the level of what happened to Sanguine Alchemy right before Trials of Osiris launched in March 2020. That was an exotic that Bungie knew would cause problems for elimination, and they took action early to to stop that from happening. I would need some more time to think of a worthy rework for Geomags, but it would no longer have anything to do with your super. As recompense for this change, I would add the second part of Geomags exotic perk, which states, damaging enemies with Chaos Reach extends its duration to the base Chaos Reach super. It was always the topping off aspect of Geomags that made them busted for PvP. The extended duration was always more of a PvE effect. This would keep Chaos Reach as a viable option in endgame PvE, as well as diversify your exotic armor options for Chaos Reach, as you wouldn't be locked to just Geomags anymore. Now, I'm not trying to dog on Warlocks here, you guys are just first up, but the next ability on the list that needs tuning is Celestial Fire. This melee does a full 105 damage all the way out to 80 meters and has insane tracking to boot. In comparison, Penumbral Blast only goes out to 25 meters and Ball Lightning only goes out to 27 meters before disappearing entirely. Considering that Celestial Fire has a much faster travel time than either of these two ranged melees, I think that some readjustments are needed. First off, cap the range to 35 meters, after which the Celestial Fire will simply disappear like the other two Warlock ranged melees. Secondly, reduce the tracking of the Celestial Fire Seekers. There is no need for a melee with this kind of range and speed to also do all the aiming for itself. Destiny 2 needs a wider skill gap, not a smaller one. As for Titans, there are really only two abilities that need to be addressed. The first is the stasis aspect, Howl of the Storm, which has a comically large freezing radius, especially since it's an ability that you'll be using at point-blank range to your enemy. I think that players shouldn't be frozen by this aspect. Instead, the crystals from the melee should instantly shatter and deal damage to the enemy player. This stasis interaction already happens 
with glacier grenades, and the Howl of the Storm aspect when used against enemy Titan barricades. So it should be possible to tune Howl of the Storm to treat enemy players like enemy barricades. The second Titan ability that needs tuning is the exotic boots Dune Marchers. Back in Season of the Worthy, Bungie upped the static charge radius to 20 meters from its original 12 meters. Considering the potency of the chain lightning, I think it's time to revert this buff back to 12 meters. What would be even better is if Bungie could change the static charge radius to 12 meters against players and keep it at 20 meters against PvE combatants. Bungie already does this type of ability effect differentiation between players and PvE combatants for certain stasis abilities, and it's time to see this type of player v combatant tuning come to the rest of the sandbox as well. Also, quick note, can Dune Marchers please stop chaining lightning from dead bodies? Thank you, and rant. As for Hunters, there are two abilities in need of some tuning to bring them in balance. First off, the Revenant Shuriken melee range should be reduced, as it has a comically long range just like Celestial Fire. Right now, a single Shuriken can travel almost 70 meters before despawning. I think that the range of the shurikens should be brought down to about 45 meters. And before you say, but Kujay, you reduced Celestial Fire's range even further than that. The reasoning for not nerfing the range as much on the shuriken is because it only does 65 damage, whereas Celestial Fire does a whopping 105 damage. Yes, I know that the shuriken also slows, but with my proposed reworks to slow, getting hit by a shuriken at 45 meters would be like getting a light scratch, instead of the death penalty it is now with no gun accuracy or movement for 5 seconds. And finally, the last ability that needs tuning is the exotic helmet, Ask of Bacchus. I would prevent the hunter aspect Winter Shroud from slowing players while using Mask of Bacchus. The teleport is ridiculous enough to deal with, especially for controller players, and there's just no need to slap a slow on top of that. Let's keep the Bacchus slowing to PvE only, shall we? And with all that said, I think that Stasis and most of the other problem light-based abilities of the PvP sandbox would finally be brought in line. Now, let's discuss how we can overhaul the special ammo economy inside the Crucible. Alright, now it's time to talk about one of the longest running problems facing the Crucible, that being the Special Ammo Economy. Right now, other than 120 RPM hand cannons and Dead Man's Tail, the vast majority of all weapon kills in the Crucible are from special weapons. In particular, high-impact shotguns like Felwinter's Lie. There are a number of ways to bring the amount of special ammo in the Crucible to a more reasonable level, while also incentivizing primary weapon usage and less popular special weapon archetypes. First off, I think that scavenger mods should not have any effect inside the Crucible. The biggest reason for the rampancy of special weapons in PvP is that you can easily turn one kill with your sniper or shot gun into three more kills, as you get three special ammo shots per green brick with two scavenger mods on. I would still have special ammo bricks spawn from players that are killed with special ammo reserves, but limiting these bricks to just one shot of special ammo would go a long way towards reducing the prevalence of special weapons inside the Crucible. With the deactivation of scavenger mods inside the Crucible, I would move all the weapon dexterity mods back to leg armor and out of the current gauntlet armor mod socket. There are already so many good mods for gauntlets between reloads, fastball, champion mods, etc., that it just makes sense to put dexterity mods back into leg armor to better balance out the amount of mods available on each type of armor. But why stop there? With scavenger mods deactivated inside the Crucible, I think this is a perfect opportunity for Bungie to make some good quality of life changes, as well as introduce some additional leg armor mods to make build crafting have more choices to consider. First off, the traction mod should just be deprecated and a new toggle setting added to the controller settings page. Traction was already nerfed to not give bonus mobility anymore with the launch of Beyond Light. And at this point, 
It's just a sensitivity setting. Controller players that need traction to have an enjoyable experience deserve to have two leg armor mod sockets like the rest of us. The next change I would make is to add Icarus as a leg armor mod. This would enable exotic weapons to finally have good in-air accuracy and would diversify the PvP sandbox overnight. Bungie was able to add champion mods to exotic weapons via gauntlet armor mods, so why not utilize a similar solution for PvP? Considering that we're immortal space wizards that use the powers of the light, and the dark, I think that we should have the option to make our weapons as accurate in the air as they are on the ground. I mean, for God's sakes, even Halo has this functionality, and while Chief is a beast, he's no guardian. Come on, Bungie. Lastly, adding some new mobility-focused leg armor mods would further incentivize mod choices inside PvP, but without breaking the sandbox. Imagine a mod like Battle Runner, which could grant a temporary boost to movement speed and weapon handling after getting a kill with a primary weapon. We could also add mods like Fleet Footed that would grant resistance to movement crippling elemental effects and disorienting attacks. Imagine reducing the impact of stasis slow and making the move speed penalty less severe, or allowing your jump to still be usable after getting suppressed or being caught in a smoke grenade. These new mods would all be welcome additions to a currently stale PvP experience. Now, back to the special ammo economy. The next major change that I'd make on this front is to set the amount of special ammo you spawn with to be dependent on the archetype of special weapon that you have equipped. The general premise would be that the higher the impact of the weapon, the less ammo you spawn with. Let me walk you through my vision for this new starting special ammo paradigm. Breach-loaded grenade launchers would only spawn with one shot, as large AoE explosive weapons tow the line between special and heavy weapons. For shotguns, aggressive frames like Felwinter's Lie would only spawn with one shot. Precision frames and lightweight frames, such as Retold Tail and 7th Seraph CQC-12, would spawn with two shots. Slug shotguns like First and Last Out would also spawn with two shots. And rapid fire frames like the Ikolo shotgun would spawn with three shots. For fusion rifles, 820 charge time fusions like Glacioclasm would spawn with two shots. 740 and 660 charge time fusions such as Main Ingredient and Timeline's Vertex would spawn with three shots, and 540 charge time fusions like Null Composure would spawn with four shots. Bastion, since it fires three shots for the price of one, would only spawn with one shot. Bastion may not be Felwinter's Lie, but it's not exactly balanced either, and this would be an easy way to nerf it in PvP and leave it alone in PvE. And for sniper rifles, Aggressive frames like Frozen Orbit would spawn with two shots, adaptive frames like Adored would spawn with three shots, and rapid fire frames like Supremacy would spawn with four shots. Now, you may be saying, but Kujay, you can't give more special ammo to certain guns on spawn. That'd be broken. In the current PvP sandbox, yeah, it probably would be. In my new PvP sandbox, you wouldn't be able to collect that much special ammo from bricks, and the only special weapons starting with more ammo than today would be little-used archetypes like rapid-fire shotguns, lower-impact fusion rifles, and non-aggressive frame sniper rifles. And in my second video about the Crucible Sandbox, I'll be buffing primary weapon damage across the board, which will serve as a further disincentive to running around with only a special weapon. Now, to incentivize and reward primary weapon usage, I would also introduce one more new leg armor mod, and I would call it Performance Bonus. This mod would read, Kills with weapons that use primary ammo have an escalating chance to grant bonus special ammo reserves, and it would cost three energy to socket. This is intended to reward and promote play with your primary weapon. However, it would not be a guarantee you get special ammo on all primary weapon kills, as it would be too easy to blint targets 
with high impact snipers and grenade launchers, and then clean them up with your primary weapon in a shot or two, and then refund your special ammo. For PvP, the first kill would have a 50% chance to grant special ammo, the second kill would have a 75% chance to grant special ammo, and the third kill would make it a guarantee. In PvP, performance bonus would grant half of your starting default special ammo reserves, rounding up. This means one shot for 55, 65, and 80 RPM shotguns, 820 charge time fusion rifles, breech loaded grenade launchers, and aggressive frame sniper rifles. This then means two shots for 140 RPM shotguns, 740, 660, and 540 charge time fusion rifles, and 90 and 140 RPM sniper rifles. In PvE, performance bonus could be tuned completely separately and start with a much lower percent chance to get special ammo on a primary weapon kill, and could require drastically more kills to ramp up to a guarantee. The focus of this video is on PvP sandbox balance, but I still think a mod like Performance Bonus could be a cool choice for PvE to help combat the inherent juggler effect of ammo drops in that part of the game. And finally, in Trials of Osiris, Survival, and all other round-based modes, I would have all players revert back to the default spawn special ammo reserves for their respective special weapon type at the beginning of each round. One of the biggest pain points of these round-based modes is that the earliest rounds matter the most because the winning team gets a huge stockpile of special ammo that can then be used to steamroll the enemy team in subsequent rounds. Having everyone start off on an equal playing field from a special ammo perspective every round in these more competitive game types would go a long way to making them more fair and making primary weapons more important. And with all that said, I think that special weapons in PvP would become much more special and something used only situationally or for brief bursts, rather than as the pseudo-primary weapons that they are today. There is more work to be done to balance the Crucible, namely tweaking certain outlier special weapons and a complete re-baseline of primary weapon base damage, which will be the primary topics for my second video about PvP sandbox balance. And just like that, we've come to the end of another video. Hopefully you guys all enjoyed this latest installment and in how we can continue to evolve Destiny 2. The debate over the Crucible and sandbox balancing will never end, but we can get the game back to a much healthier place where more weapons are viable and less shots of Felwinter's Lie are shoved down our throats. Notes. As I mentioned before, in my next video, we'll be doing a deep dive into the primary weapon sandbox. As I got to the end of writing the script for this video, I was clocking in at over 40 minutes, and I knew that I had to split this video up into two more easily digestible chunks. So my apologies for those of you that were looking to hear my thoughts about primary weapons specifically, that will be coming very soon. On a completely different note, this coming weekend, be the D2 World First Race for Vault of Glass, and I'll be live streaming that right here on YouTube. I'll be teaming up with my old buddy Azdacross, and it should be an absolutely nasty time, so I hope to catch you all there. Before you go, if you want to support this channel, make sure to leave a comment down below, drop a like, and hit that sub button. Have an amazing week, guys, and I hope to catch you all in the next one. This has been your host, Kujay. Cheers.